I mean, oh my gosh, it's adorable. The only thing I would do different is do a lighter eye than mouth. But anyway, that's my boo. One down, 15 to go. So it'll be fun. And uh, good morning, Sharon. Hey, Sharon, I have your other quilt done. Yay! You're going to be around this afternoon. I can um, drop it by. I have to run some errands, go to the bank, yada, yada. So um, if you are, just type it up there. It's magic. It shows up in the chat. Okay. Anyway, today we're working on block 19. After we get that one done, we're going to do block 24. Both simple little, um, block, well, I don't know. We'll see how simple they are. I don't want to jinx myself. But we're going to do them six and a half inch blocks. This one, block 19, is paper pieced. So I decided to make it super simple. I printed out the paper. When you, when you download the pattern, you get the pieces for the paper piecing. You get And make sure, I say this every time, um, make sure that you um, print it actual size. There is always on them a block, a square or a line that tells you um, it's a one inch, a one inch block or a one inch line and measure to make sure otherwise your block will not come out. And if you have to piece pieces together, like we have to piece these two together, they won't line up. Good morning, Laura. <laughs> Where else would you find me? I know that's true. That's cute. Okay. So these are the fabrics I picked. Oh, just the background fabric and birds. Okay, I'm going to tip you down, please. I hope nobody um, gets, I always say that seasick, but I shouldn't use that word. <laughs> okay, let's tip you down. Um, and I will move my chair over. I was downloading my designs. I got new designs for my long arm. I'm super excited. I got trains. Like, how cool is that? I, I never know. It's like Christmas every month. I mean, I pay for it, but, but it's still like Christmas every month because I don't know. They're new designers, but they're done for specific, some for specific quilts. It's Wasatch Quilting is where I, um, the club that I belong to. I used to belong to two. I just belong to this one now. How many designs can you use? And, um, they do specific quilts that makes me want to make these quilts. Like one is for, it's called Globetrotter. I've never heard of it before. It's a log cabin quilt. And, um, but this block that I love besides the churn dash, the next block I love is card trick. And it's a whole bunch of quilting designs for the card trick block. So now I have to make a card trick quilt. That's going to be fall. I have, to, I have a lot to get done before I can do that. Okay, on to paper piecing. This is what we're going to do. We need my little supplies. I have my little hand ruler. I have my tape for my boo-boos. I get it out every time because maybe I won't need it then. My rotary cutter. My quarter inch, add a quarter ruler. I call it quarter inch ruler, but it's really an add a quarter ruler. My papers. And this is just the back of a Christmas card and I've used it to take notes, but I use it all the time to hold, or I have this piece of cardboard. You can use it. It came in a, um, charm square set and I just kept it because it works. And then once I've written too much on them, Oh, by then I've gotten another card in the mail and it totally works. So the pieces are all numbered on here. But since I'm only using one color, usually I write in what they are, okay? But, and I, now that I say this, I'm going to jinx myself. But this one's pretty straightforward. The author of this, the woman whose blog it's from, uh, Bridget, Bridget, sorry, Bridget he Heitland? That's how I'm guessing you say her name. Anyway, she did all different colors. Uh, that's a little too busy for the quilt that I'm doing, and... We have a lot going on in that quilt as a sampler. So I opted just to do background and one colored fabric. So, 
And I know that the cornerstones are background, which I could have written in, but hopefully I remember. And then opposite is the color because you wouldn't have background, background. So I didn't feel the need to write all the information in, but usually I just take a pencil and I write in what's going there, like BK for background, and then I could put C for color. And then this would be background, color, background, color. So now it's all written in and um, clearly. So this one says we start with, um, oh, I wrote color twice. See, this is why you shouldn't do it and talk at the same time. Anyway, so you sew, it's basically like paint by number, only I call this sew by number. So the first thing we're going to do, we've done it before, we take the fabric for piece one, which is our background fabric. And we're going to put it right side up on the wrong side of the fabric. I know, it's kind of awkward. This felt so weird to me the first time I did it, I hated it, and I refused. Can you believe this? I absolutely like, put it away, refused to ever do it again. And then I took the class by Carol Doak, and I had to make 40 of the same block, and I learned how to do it, and I love it. Oh, the detail, the points you can get with this, it's absolutely amazing. Now, I'm hoping that the author of this made them... Um, when they numbered them, made them all go so that when we line it up, they the seams all nestle here. And I will try and remember to check it. Now this is a big piece. So if you get nervous about this piece shifting, you can put a pin in or you can use glue stick and just uh, water soluble glue and just glue it down. Then we're gonna take piece two and we're gonna put those two right sides together. I super oversized these because it's never more embarrassing than being on a live stream and then not knowing, I mean, then not having enough fabric covering it. Plus, if you're a beginner, you don't want to worry about it. This is an angle flip, and you want to make sure that when it flips up and is pressed open like this, that you have all your seams and everything. I mean, all your seams. You have that whole piece covered by your fabric. You don't have a little gap which if you end up with, it's not the end of the world you can fix. Okay, I've dropped my stitch length down to 1.5 because um, 1.8 works. My machine doesn't go to 1.8, so it goes to 1.5. And totally, you you want it that little because you want the paper to rip off, but you want, don't want your stitches so close together the paper falls off because you need it to sew the rest of them. Okay, so now we're going to just sew on the line. And each of these pieces, um, each of these line, the line that I'm sewing on, this is what I'm trying to say, restart, the line that I'm sewing on touches both, uh, the seam allowance on both sides, so I want to make sure I stitch through that seam allowance. So I'm going to just pick up this and get it out of the way because we want to start right on the edge of the paper here. And some people like to use an open toe foot. Um, some people use just way, way wider where you can see the line. I'm using my quarter inch foot and I'm running the line right down through the slot in the foot. Thank goodness for the slot, I guess. So I can see exactly where that line should go. And I'm stitching right off into the Netherlands. All right. Now, if I want, I could chain piece because I have two and they're identical. Yes. Um, so I'm going to put piece one here, which is a colored piece. Okay. Now we're living dangerously because I didn't check to see whether or not the um, pieces, the seams will nest, but here's hoping she thought it through. And I'm just going to trust, kind of dangerously, living on the wild side. Okay, so now I can bring this up, pull it back, chain this next piece right in there. Okay. I'll just clip this baby off. And I'll just stitch this through. Some people 
lose my foot pedal, but I can catch it. There we go. I really could get a high, <laughs> build something under there. There, there we go. All right, so now we're going to take the pin out because we don't need it in there anymore. All right, and you can see that I've stitched on the paper, on the line, between one, piece one and piece two. And I'm going to just whip over to the iron. It's not warm. Well, actually, I'm just going to use my little rolling iron. Nope. Rewind. It's number one. We have to cut first. The only one that's different, it's the only one you really don't need the card for because it folds down right on the stitching line. But if you think you might let the ruler slip off the um, paper, you should use the card. So you just basically put the card on the seam line. Fold it back. And that just makes it a little thicker, makes the ruler hold on more. And you know what? I think I made my first boo-boo. Not think, I know. You ready for this? This is because I was chain piecing and talking at the same time. I put this right side down. This is a common mistake, okay? And I'm actually glad I made a mistake. Because now I can show you how to fix it, especially since this runs off the paper on both sides. So what you we don't want to have it separated. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the tape and we're just going to tape right over the line, the whole line. Don't cheat yourself. Like, because we don't want the paper to fall apart. We want the paper to stay together. So basically, creating the tape... And you're going to stitch through the line again so the paper will still be fine. And now you can just pull this right off. Look at that. Now you have your whole paper and you have this. And you know what's really great about this is I could sit here and rip this out. Or since I way oversized these, use my little my rotary cutter ruler actually. And I'm just going to cut right on my stitching line. I'm going to take this off. And now I'm going to put these pieces right sides together. Nice. I'm going to put this back right on here. And I know the color was number one because of the corner piece. So I'm putting, making sure the color is touching. And I'm just sticking this right on here, a quarter inch over. I'm just checking where, my, where I'm going to sew. And now I'm ready to sew again. And that's how easy it was to fix. I could show you how to rip. And if I make another mistake, I'll show you how Carol Doak um, does her seam ripping with the rotary cutter. Very brave of her, I think. don't really need the stitch through because we're going to have to. All right. Now, the other thing you want to be careful is when you're pressing, the tape will melt. Okay, just saying. Ask me how I know. I know that I pretty much did a quarter inch seam allowance, but I can double check by folding this back down on the seam line. Put this on here. This is all off the thing, the extra part, but it doesn't matter. It's kind of hard to cut so close to my machine. Okay, now I'm going to the iron. I'm going to, oh, actually I can just press it up. I keep forgetting I have my beautiful little roller. Okay, so now, now this is the use for the card. So we have piece one on, now we need piece two, and piece two is right there. We're going to sew between, we're going to add piece three. We have piece one, piece two, we're adding piece three. So. The line between two and three is the one we we are going to sew on. So we're going to put the card on that line, and we're going to um, fold back, fold back on it, okay? And ripping back the paper to the seam. It's a little harder to rip back the paper with the tape on it, but okay. Now I'm going to cut right along that line. 
And I'm, this is a big enough piece for me to reuse somewhere else in the project. So I'm just going to put that aside, put the other in my trash pile. And now you can begin to see that there's kind of a point to there. So I'm going to now press open the second one. This is a really nice roller. I make sure I stand up when I do this. It's kind of good to keep your body moving. If you stay in the same position at your sewing machine and you have this station all set up where you don't have to move, it's not as good. You, you need to, our bodies want to move. So I'm standing up because not because I have to to do this, I could do it sitting down, but because I've trained myself to move all the time, which is why my irons over there are not right here. Um, if I'm in a rush and I'm doing something and I have to be done, then yes, I might be tempted to have it close, but I'm not going to. All right. Again, this is a big enough piece. I'm putting it over in the save. So see, it didn't really matter that I overcut it. It will get used. Now you can see point on this one. All right. So now the opposite goes next to color goes background. Okay. Next to background goes color. So it's hopefully I don't mess up. And now we're just stitching on that line, the line between two and three. I'm going to show you right here when we line it up it'll be easier to see with the color one you're going to put it you're going to match it right up to that area right there to this where i cut because that's the quarter inch seam we cut a quarter inch away from that line and we added a quarter to that line and it doesn't matter that we can't see a line to sew on because we're going to flip it over and sew right on the line. Now if I want to be conservative with this fabric a little bit more, I'll move it down just a little bit. Okay, so now putting my foot up and sliding it down and I'm going to sew right, right on the line. Okay. Let's just do both of them at the same time, pull them both out, we'll cut this. Now, if these um, pieces didn't come all the way off the edge, I would be clipping the threads. The only reason I'm not clipping the threads is when I um, rotary cut around the edge, I'm going to cut all those threads off. That's exactly what's going to happen. Okay, so now we're going to push this up. Starting to see the little pinwheel that's going to take shape. We flip it over, and there's one more piece. So we had color, so now we're going to have the background. But first, we need the card. I'm kind of making a mess here. I don't know why. Just that kind of day, I guess. So we just added our quarter inch seam allowance. You can see it's showing up, it's kind of cool. And putting our background piece on here. Mm. My watch is talking to me, not sure why. Okay, let's add, let's press this one open. Now I will tell you, when you have a lighter fabric over a darker fabric, I stick the lighter fabric just a hair over the darker fabric. I don't know if you can see that well enough on there. I do that so that, when because in paper piecing, you have to press this up. I can't flip it the other way, and I can't flip it the other way. That's the threads I picked up in there. I can't flip it the other way because um, the paper's there. So it just it won't work. 
so it has to go that way and you will have a shot you'd have a shadow of the darker fabric behind there and so I just want to make sure that doesn't happen okay so now I'm putting this on the next line I'm gonna sew on and I'm cutting away saving my big piece of background making a little pile of trash now I have one more big piece of background and then we just have to add the little or the little corner pieces and we will be good to go We can cut. The cool thing about the next one is the corner pieces are on opposite sides, two different lines. We can trim both of those at the same time, which I often do. So this one's the one that they want us to do um, for. No, they want us to do the other one first. I'm not quite sure why, but it doesn't matter. It's arbitrary. Sometimes some of the numbers, like which one of these two we do first, is arbitrary. But I'm folding this down now to pull that back paper back. I'm going to fold it on that line and put my ruler on there. There we go. And now I'm going to come over to this other corner right here and repeat that same process. This one has two seams that have to come back. Uh, all right, now you can see where these corners are going to go. I'll put that one up out of the way. We'll do the same thing for this one. We're going to flip this over. Again, I left that hair over so there's no shadow. This one, peel this back. I'll neaten up before we do the next block. This is going to hit right on here. Okay. I love that they're doing um, different techniques that they have the paper piecing. Yes. I do like that there's the applique in there, but I've chosen this to be an applique free quilt. But I am going to dem I'll demonstrate the applique technique when I do. I may break down and put one in, but if I don't, I will demonstrate it when I get the on the block of the month when I get a block in that has um, paper piecing. I mean paper piecing applique. That's I am paper piecing. Okay, so now I have my two corners on both of them. So I don't need my cardboards anymore, so I'm just going to move them out of the way. The more mess I clean out of here, the better. So now, I've, um, and I also don't need to cut on any more lines with the add a quarter, so I will put that away. And I'm going to press with my iron, which I'm going to wake up. So, for the last, because it'll make it lie flatter. So now I'm going to, I've cut these triangles to fit the other triangles. Now, I'm not a total fabric waster, but so here I'm just lining up. I can actually see the dark line through the paper, so I'm sort of lining up the corner to the corner. It doesn't really matter. You could actually stitch this from the front, stitch a quarter inch away, but we're going to flip it and sew it right on the paper. Going right through the seam allowance. Now I'll grab another one right here. We have four corners and four triangles. And I, um, she actually, I believe in the pattern she actually gave you the square size to cut out the corners. If not, and any of you are doing so, I can show you, maybe I'll show you before I go on, 
how to measure and decide how much fabric to cut, especially once you become more comfortable with the um, paper piecing itself. Okay, just folding that up out of the way because I will use my iron to make it nice and crisp. So I'll get these on and then I'll show you how to do that, um, how to measure. We'll see if you can see well enough. I'm, try I'm working on trying to find a way to hang a camera over my head. Here we go, my, my iron's hot. Over my head so you can see straight down on my workspace. Um, and we can switch between the two um, for when I do the other videos. So, there we go. And I know you're saying, why didn't I leave that roller thing out? Probably should have, but whatever. This is the last corner. We just sew the two together. This was a simple paper piece block. Um, you could have made it more complicated with different colors, doing different um, different colored block fabrics, and each one a different color. I slipped this a little to the wide, so we'll see if this is going to work. I'll cover the whole space because I hate it. Okay, so. Let me press these babies in a lie flat. I haven't forgotten. Okay, they look kind of wonky, but we're going to trim them up. But I want to show you, let's see. Oh, I've got to dip down so I can actually see. Okay, so. When you have a space on here, and I wanted to cut a triangle for the, I mean a square. I wanted to cut a square, cut it in half, and make the triangles. So I put the corner of my ruler on the lines, okay? Now, you know, oh, maybe you don't know the math. If you add three eighths of an, you need to add three eighths of an inch to the actual square, and the square is two. So it was two and three eighths. Okay, now I don't know about you, but I want slippage. So I went, okay, that's two and a half. All right, so you could, two and a half brings it out to here. Here's, here's the line. It touches at the two, two, okay? So you would add three eighths. You can see that it comes out to three eighths. That's two eighths, that's three eighths. And that gives you the quarter inch seam allowance down here. It's sort of like drawing a line down here. Shh because you need that quarter inch seam allowance, right? So I didn't want to embarrass myself in front of you, so I cut a three inch square. I mean, that's like huge. If I was doing it at home and patiently knowing I wasn't, knowing I wasn't talking while I was sewing, I would have cut a two and a half inch square and cut it once in half on the diagonal and I would have had my two corner pieces. Okay, so that is how I measure a block. Now this triangle one, I'm going to, I put the seam, the, I use the line that it is be, that I'm going to sew between. So to attach this one, I'm sewing between those two, but to attach this one, I'm sewing on this line. So I want this piece, so I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to put my quarter inch, because that's the seam allowance on there, and it's going to flip up to here, right? So it ends right this triangle ends right here so there's one two and like there's the half so it's five eighths but that's on this line we need to add a quarter inch seam allowance so five eighths you add the three eighths that brings it out to three which is what I cut actually I cut a three inch wide piece okay and then I made it long enough because it's got to flip up from here so you can see that this part's off, okay? And the four and a quarter is roughly here, so I cut a four and a half by three rectangle. That's what I cut to sew those. So that's the math of figuring out how to measure what you need. So now I need a bigger ruler. Excuse me for reaching in front of you. I'm going to cut not on the dark solid line. I'm gonna cut on the cutting line. So I put the quarter inch line on the edge of the block or the darker line so it disappears and I'm cutting off. And whether it cuts exactly on the line or not, 
I don't lose sleep over because I've actually marked the edge of the block. So I know that it will be the right pieces. And I'm cutting all the way around on that line. Now this, the author of this block put in these little doohickeys there, which I will do with a smaller ruler. And they're for lining up the corner as my, and so I'm going to put them in because sometimes they're helpful, sometimes they're not, but they're not in the way. Otherwise, I'm going to get both of them set to do that. Well, that was good. I don't know why my machine is skipping there. I'm saving the bigger pieces. I like to cut the seam first that offers me the biggest piece to reuse, so essentially I'm using less waste. Okay, so now I'm going to show you, I don't need the bigger ruler, pardon my reach again. I'm going to put this here, and I'm going to put it right on these little lines. Here I am using her actual lines because... I'm not exactly sure where the measuring in is to it. So, and then I'm double checking that I may, could have maybe trimmed this a little tighter than I could. So, I will, I'll hold it up so that you can actually see what it looks like. I don't know, maybe it's better down low. But first I want to um, move all this trash out of the way. I'm not dumping it on the floor. I could, just need to pick it up. But today's trash day, so my trash barrel's empty. Okay, so here, here's the corner, the way that corner works. Now we're going to put this right sides together, okay? And We're matching the center. So I'm going to grab a pin and then I'm going to probably just use my little clips. I have some little ones in here. Of course, I can never find the little ones that I want. There's a couple. I think two will be enough. But we need to match with a pin. So I'm going right through that point and I'm going to stab that point right there. And I'm making sure my pin is straight up and down. I'm lining up the paper so that it matches. And I'm going to clip right here on one side of the pin. And then I'm going to clip right here on the other side of the pin. And if you want, you can put a clip at the top and bottom. You got to take that pin out. Otherwise, you're going to. So it's going to drag on your throat plate and make a hot mess. So now we're doing the quarter inch, but we're actually sewing on the line because that's where we're going to hit that point. And we're again using that tight stitch length. Now, if you're nervous about it lining up, which I should be, but I'm not going to be, um, you can do a lot, like you could run a basting stitch here and check it because if you have to pull it out, you're just running a basting stitch. And if you don't have to pull it out, you don't have to rip it out the basting stitch. You just stitch the tiny stitching. Okay. So now... I am actually off the seam allowance, so I'm just backing up, so I'm getting to the very end of the seam allowance. Stitching right down here. And the reason I get a little nervous is the paper does shift. Um, it sort of, but I have my IDT on, and it should work fine. Once I hit that point, I can take the other one off, okay? Making sure it all lines up here. And I'm stitching right off the end. Now we'll take a test. We'll see how it goes. Where's my little needle down? And now I'm gonna, I'm just pushing the stitch length back up because um, the next thing we're gonna stitch, we don't need 1.84. That would be kind of crazy. So here we go. And if it's wrong, I'm not gonna stitch it, but it's not. Look how that came out. 
Look at that. That's paper piecing for you. So now we're going to just rip the paper out of the seam here. I won't make you watch me rip all the paper out unless you really want to see it, but I take it off the seam. I've got to wake this up really quick because otherwise it'll be hot enough. When you iron on with the paper, I don't steam. You probably heard my iron steam a little bit at the start because it's like force of habit. I always press and then steam. It's like, but I quickly shut it off because the paper will curl. It just gets wet, you know? You've seen what happens when you get wet paper wet. So there's no reason. I'm just pulling all this little paper stuff out of here. And, all right, so. We're not gonna have the little pin wheel effect here. You don't get that with the paper piecing. This block could have been done without paper piecing and we could have made a little pinwheel in the center. I don't know, it's got more than a pinwheel. But, um, so instead, I'm going to press this seam open because this is one heck of a lot of bulk right here in the center. That's like a ton, okay? So let's get this paper off the table for the next block. I'm going to press it for you. I'm going to press it open. I'll be right back. There you go. There is our six and a half inch block. Okay, I always miss where the camera is. There it is. Okay. Now I do have to peel off some of the paper. I realize because um, it will stick on my design though if it doesn't have. But it's super easy to rip the paper off. You just bring it back on the seam and look. This one already start wanted to pop off. It just we already took the seam allowance off. It just. Stick your thumb right under there. You could run your seam ripper along the line if you want, um, along the sewing line. The dull, the bull part, don't put the sharp part. You might cut your fabric. That would not be good. It will make it pop up too. And um, so I'm just, I know I said I wasn't going to do this and bore you, but I'm not pulling out the little stuff. I'll get that off camera. But, um, I'm just pulling most of it out. And I'm going to stick it up to add. I'll move Boo. She's really not part of this quilt. And I'll put the blocks there. All right. Maybe it'll fit. Maybe I need to just drop this baby down here. Put it right there. there. My yes, my whale is still upside down. I swear, I swear, I swear I'll do it today. Okay, I'm cleaning up, cleaning up my mess, and we're on to block two. Paper piecing, golly, you guys, that was awesome. Put my little wonder clips back. No trash. Okay, so this one. I picked this one because we just did that block with all the flying geese. And I think it's adorable. And I get to use the whales. So, I don't know why I'm pulling it all out. I don't need to. So, because the directions are on both sides. So, this time I'm not because I chose to do... I don't know why this isn't... It's not going in easy because I'm on TV. <laughs> so, there we go. I chose to do each of my houses a different color. So that's my here's my background fabric, which is really only the squares for the top of the flangies. And I want you to notice I did not draw lines on it. I used my whale fabric for the doors. I fussy cut them. I have a friend, Heidi August, who fussy cuts a ton. She'd be proud of me for these, I think. Anyway, so those are my doors. And then these are the fabrics. I'll just lay them off here that you'll see because each roof will be different. Um, 
these are the different fabrics that I did. Two dark houses and two light houses. And the light houses, you can decide. The only do one that can't, <laughs> the door's that one. Okay, we'll see how we put those doors in there. Um, here we go. We're gonna do the flying geese. This block, I could introduce this person now, is by Stacy. Cannot pronounce her last name. I E S T H S U. Iced, iced Sue. I'm not sure what nationality that is, but this is from her blog. It's, it's adorable. I really like these little houses. But the roofs are flying geese. Okay, and I want to show you this up close. This is the Cluck Cluck So, the tape that was from Cluck Cluck So. Okay, there it is. The red line is the center line. The blue lines are a quarter inch away. We're going to use that center line to sew. No marking needed. Now, hopefully, even with lines marked, you make a mistake each side. And again, it's my like normal lecture. Lines have thickness. You can't sew right on the line because then you go to fold it. And um, you go to fold it and it won't fold. It has to fold over the line. So we're going to put our square. So these pieces, let me just tell you what they're cut. This is cut um, two by three and a half. So because the height is two, this block is two. Okay, and the ratio is correct so that we get the quarter inch in the middle, right? Because it's three and a half. Get it? Two. Anyway, I think you do. I'm not going to. So I've dropped my stitch length to two, I've increased it from the paper piecing, but I've set it at 2.0 and I have the red line right here. I know that's where my needle is. I put my ruler underneath the stitch plate, underneath the presser foot with the needle up, brought it down so I could put the tape there. It stops at the feed dogs. It's not right up to the needle. I suppose you could make a point on the tape and you could put it up there or cut a little wedge out and put it all the way up there. I don't feel the need to do that. Um, so I'm putting this under here and I know that I want this one to flip up this way, right? It's going to flip up here. So I want the edge of the thread to touch that corner on this side of the corner. Not straddle it, just touch it. So you'll get used to it. I just bring the needle, the stops needle down, so I just bring that right up so that it kisses there. But it, it looks actually like it's stabbing the corner when it comes down. And then to make sure I end there, I run the corner on the same the same side the needle is to the fabric, I run that same that same side on that line. So for me, I'm keeping the fabric on the outside of that line right there. It's touching it. It looks like it's running straight up it, but it's actually a hair, like the width of the thread over. Okay? So we're going to do another one. And just do it the same way. We're going to run all four. We're going to chain all four of them in there. But it's easier to flip, right? To nestle it in when you're chaining these. So now you have to stop and think. This time this is flipping up. So I want to be on this side of it, okay? So I'm just kissing it right there, and I'm on that side of it. So this time I'm running it to that right side of the line. Just, like, it's just touching that point. It's just touching that right side. And you have to pay attention all the way in. All the way in. You have to pay attention all the way in. You can't, like, so distracted. Oh, I am, but... That's why I have a seam ripper here today. So I'm now setting it up. It's the same one. Now I'm on the opposite side, running it straight up, running it up the tape. I highly recommend that you guys try this tape. I, I mean, she's, uh, she's, I'm not sponsored by anybody, believe me. Um, and, uh, but I think it's the best thing since sliced bread. They have these big, I have this big plastic shield that I could tape on here, but my machine curves down here. This tape is like perfect. Okay, I'm waking up my machine because we're going to really need to be here. I'm in my iron. Okay, so now I'm doing the other way. 
I'm coming back the other way. Before I start, I'm going to snip this um, feed feeder. Okay. So I just, it doesn't matter which way I go on this one. I let it go out under. So hopefully it doesn't um, hit it. But so, oh, that's good. So much easier when you chain them. There we go. Right along that line. And right there. Now I'm going to feed this through. All right. We're going to cut them apart. And I'm going to honestly show you how they look. Because if any of them aren't perfect, I can show you how I might fix it without resewing, if possible. Okay, so they're all pressed. I haven't trimmed anything. And you can see kind of on this one that when I trim it, if I just trimmed away the white, which I will, just to trim away just the white part of the square, you might see, well, that's a horrible trimming job. And that's showing against the white you really want it to be straight. Okay, I fixed it. Um, now that I've flipped it down, see how you can see some of the navy fabric there? Okay, and when I look on the back, there's some of the white fabric there. So I'm going to take my ruler. It's kind of cheating here. There it is, hiding. And we know the rectangle's right. Okay? We absolutely know it's right. So I'm taking my rotary cutter. I'm just trimming maybe that little bit of white away and when I do that you can see that the blue is hardly showing okay and we know the corner is correct so now I can trim away that blue fabric in there because I don't need it for lining up anything anymore and this one's fine that one's perfect now what do they do with all the other ones put them down and hit them Nowhere to be found. Oh, they're under the ruler. Go figure. Okay, this one's fine. This one, everything's underneath. There's a tad bit of the white there, so if I wanted to be super picky, I could just take that little bit off right there. Okay? And now we know that it's going to be right, and we haven't lost our corner at all. You could use your ro rotary cutter and cut these, okay? This one is right, so I'm just trimming it. You'll have to trust me. I've been doing this a lot with the tape so that I'm pretty good at it. And now I'm taking this one off because this one came out right too. So there were two that I needed to trim just a little bit. But you can see how that worked, okay? So now we have to go down the other side, and we'll have our flying geese roofs done. And we're going to do it the exact same way. So I'm just getting my little piece out of the way, finding the corner, kissing the corner. I wish I could zoom in so you could just see how it runs down the tape. It would be so cool. No, I'm not really set up for that. I watch other places zoom in, zoom out. They have a cam like camera. I have Jess and Dave's camera, but I'm not gonna. Um, I don't know. We'll see whether I invest to do more YouTube. Okay, I'm actually on the wrong side, so I need to come back up. There we go. If you're off by 
like a sixteenth of an inch or something, or even up to an eighth if you want, you can just trim out the white part and leave the whole rectangle if the white's smaller. So, absolutely can do that. Some people draw the line. Some people take the square to the iron and press it. I find that when you do that, you've distorted it a little bit. So, or I, I can only speak for myself, distort it a little bit. And so I don't find that I'm as happy with the finished result. So, now let's see how these came out. I was talking the whole time, so we may have um, either some ripping or some adjusting to do. I tend to rip out before I trim away just the under piece because I don't like the extra bulk in there. So that's just me. But it, it works. It totally works. Okay, let's take a look at them. Tell me what you think. This one's fine. Even when I flip it over, you hardly see any of the white back there. So I am just trimming. I'm going to lift this up and trim away my quarter inch seam allowance. And I have roof number one done. Birds. And this one, there is white on the back. But see, I still have this perfect corner. It, I'm not quite sure why, so I'm going to trim and make the rectangle correct. Okay. So. And now I'm just cutting the two fabrics away. And if I lay them, these two right on top of each other, they're the same size. I haven't altered anything because I used the base. Okay. This one's fine. No dark. Stars. This one a little white back here but I think ultimately this one's fine I'm just going to trim it away not using my good scissors which is why I'm having trouble struggling with that okay we have our four flying geese and I actually made the sailboats right side up and the coral right side up shocker now we have to decide to put the fabric together and decide, I'm going to move this out of the way, it's distracting me. Um, which, we have to sew the, these pieces together with the um, door in the middle. Which just seems like it's so much bigger. I may have cut something wrong, but. That is a plane flying overhead. I have not heard a plane fly overhead in a long time. Okay, so this is the stars. You can tell me what you think. We well, I'm gonna lay them here so that you can see them all. Okay. Let's see. We'll make the coral. Give the coral the dark one. The dark rail and the door. And then this guy. Maybe these guys. This one gets the white one. 
Okay, what do you think? Um, I could do... I think this needs more light background. So I'm going to switch that one over there and put that one there. What do you think? You guys like them? I gotta see what this is. A, I think it's a helicopter. Oh my goodness, there's something happening in our neighborhood, which I'm ignoring because we are doing our live stream. That is a police helicopter going overhead, going over my yard. If I see a strange man running in the backyard because I got my shades up, I'll let you know. I have no idea what it's for. What there, it could have had nothing to do with here. <laughs> They're just flying slowly over my yard. All right, I'm sewing these together. And I don't know what the delay is between the... Um, when I show you something and when you see it. I believe that there is a delay, which is why I can't ask you a question and then have it be different. Uh, and, um, and then have you instantaneously answer it. I just don't know what it is. Okay, so now there's another helicopter going overhead. All right, I'm nosy. I'll tell you later. Check on Facebook. Maybe Sharon. <laughs> you could check. <laughs> ah, that's so wild. I have no idea. Somebody's going to be asking and somebody's going to know. Okay. Now I gotta make sure I sew the right pieces to the right pieces. I'm all, uh, give um, pressing directions. No, we do not. Okay, I need a little coral piece for this one and then I'll hop up and grab the other one. It is going like back and forth over our backyard just so you know. I don't know if you guys can hear it through the live stream. My husband's on a business call or I'd say go look. He's got an important call going on right now. I'm wondering if they're actually maybe looking at Salem Harbor or something. Because we don't live that far from Salem Harbor. All right. I think I have all the whales up, upright. Um, I'll check that once we have this. Um, we have them all sewn here. You'll have to tune in next week to find out what happened. By the way, my arm is... I'm almost two weeks out, so Friday's workout, I get to use both my arms. It's healing really nicely. Just a few spots to keep it out of the sun, clearly. All right, pressing. Okay, so there's that whale the correct way, that whale's the correct way, boats are right side up, that whale's the correct way, there we go, this one's the correct way, so now we're just going to put them on 
clip them together and so and it always I always think it's never gonna fit and it fits beautifully I will tell you if you have one like let's say this bottom one was slightly bigger than the top or the other way around which actually this is slightly bigger you can pin the side because we know our rectangle is the right size and we can put this here and the feed dogs the fuller side if you have the fuller side on the bottom the feed dogs will grab it and gather it nicely for you and make it fit you can see i'm not stretching pulling or anything i'm just letting the machine do it and because i put that pin there it's nicely coming right together so now i'll flip this down I'm going to put a pin. I'm moving my water bottle so I can reach my pin. Putting the pin there. This is like excitement. I thought it was just like a small plane, but this is like, how long have I been talking about it now? It's still hovering over there. I mean, it's doing loops. I'm not sure how far away it's going. It keeps coming back and going right over us. So something... Something's going on. I hope it's not bad. I hope it's not tragic. Um, that would just not be a great way to spend my day. But I definitely will try and figure it out. Somebody will now put it up. Sometimes they just do it for the military. And they do practice. And they, they do drills. They come and they do the Coast Guard. Uses... Um, there's an island, we, I think it's called Cat Island, but we call it Children's Island because there's a camp, the camp. And Laura, that's the camp that the twins went to when they were, that summer they, well, two summers. They were here. And um, they, um, do, they do, they set up and do drills there. So actually, that could be what it is. And that's what I'm hoping it is. I should have led with that. That I'm not worried about. I'm really not worried. I'm just curious. All right, let's see how our houses look. Then we're going to sew them together. We can decide on the order. And okay, so I think she said to press. She didn't. I'm pressing towards the, away from the flying bees. Dang it. Actually, I'm going to press one one way and one the other way. I made an executive decision over there. I was going to let you pick, too. But I had to press these in the seam in opposite directions of the ones that were going together. So we can switch around. We don't have to have the birds and the stars together. We could have, which I actually think is better, because I pressed the dark one way and the lights one way. What do you think? Do you like it? I think it'll look better when it's all put together. So here we go. Now again, we want, if it was bigger when we um, sewed it before, we want to make it match again this way. We're going to let the feed dogs do their thing. Now we're going to sew it. This tape, as I said before, has the quarter inch line too, so you can just follow that quarter inch line. I'm so used to looking at my foot that I don't even notice it. Now we're going to do the same here. And I'm flipping it over just because I want that little bit of gathering. It's really like, I, I don't know if you can see it, it's hardly any, but... Um, 
why have it be off if it doesn't have to be? If you take time and adjust as you go, you um, have a neater, better, flatter block. You can have some hang out still. I have a little bit hanging out on this one and that will go disappear in the seam allowance. Okay, so now I need to press the same way both times. So I'm going to press towards the dark. And they'll go together. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to flip these two together and the seams should nest. And they do. I think the helicopter's gone now. Excitement's over. Okay. Now, this is interesting. These are flipped different ways, so I'm just going to flip this one because it's on top and I can control it. And then I'll press it. I didn't think about that lining up when I sewed these seams. So now I have to do the same with this one. But I'm going to flip the under one because it's easier for me to control going down this way. And there's a bit of a bubble here, so I need to ease that a little bit. Not sure why that's happening, but I think that will, no, that's not good. Hold on, it's hard because it's a tiny spot. So I'm gonna just adjust it with a bunch of pins. My mom's trick, my mom taught me that. She didn't know she was a quilter. Okay, and I'm putting the bumps down even though my pins are going the other way, we're going for it. Okay, let's sew the seam. If we don't like it, we'll redo the seam. I'm taking them out as I hit them. Luckily that one didn't hit the floor. This one's fine. All right, let's just see how it goes. We'll put this under here. I'm ready to run for the next thing that I sew today. All right, I'm going to press the seams the direction that I want them to go. Make sure they're flat when I press it open. This actually sort of made it go open, so. Should have not pulled that pin out so quick. So I'll flatten that one. There we go. I think we want this one open too because there's a lot of bulk where the houses meet, even though we flipped the seam. So I'm pressing that seam open. Okay, here's our little house block. I got to the ironing board. I know you can't hear me talk when I'm over at the ironing board, but I talk anyway because I'm always talking. I pressed the seam open. That's what I was saying because there was bulk where they lined up. And this one flipped itself open, so I went and pressed it open. But all the rest of them are closed. And you can see the area. There's a little bit of puckering, but it's not. It's flat. Where I eased it in and when this quilt is quilted you will never notice that you will never notice that okay I'm putting it up on the design wall I'll put them together so you can see them and I will tip you down my um, foot up, turn it off for a minute, okay, oops, the box makes the cord, sorry, hold on, hold the phone, 
I bounce it on a box. There they are. Oops, that's better. What do you think? I like it. I think it's working good. Love the little houses. I love the whales in the houses as the doors. I think it's kind of fun. And yes, I will flip those. I will flip those as soon as we sign off. I'll turn my machine back on and I will flip that. So anyway, my boo is done. I showed you boo. I'm going to put boo back up on the design wall so I don't lose her. And um, I'm going to move her up so you can see her again. I'll put these over here. Oh, you see them? I have to make the rest of them. And then I made the video of cutting, how to cut all the pieces. And um, that's coming out. I'm not sure when I'm going to drive up to bits and pieces this week and find out. So anybody here that's listening wants to go, let me know. Um, we can socially distance in my car. We can wear masks if we have more than two of us in there. All right. Thank you. Thank you for an awesome morning making the blocks. And um, I'm super happy with how, yeah, I'm, I am super happy with how the quilt is coming together. Tomo uh, next week, let's take a look at next week's blocks. I printed out, finally, hold on, I have to grab one out of the box. So we, we did skip around because I wanted to do that six and a half and I'm going to rearrange some stuff on the wall later. But this, um, I'm not in love with this one, but I'm going to do it anyway. I think it's X's and O's. Um, that's next week. It's 21, well, it's 21. And I, because I don't like it that much, I'm going to do it six and a half, make another six and a half inch block 21. But um, we did skip 20. I never I had trouble printing it out for some reason. Didn't keep, keep showing up. So here's block 20. This one I'm going to do because I, I think there's a perfect opportunity to fussy cut the center. I'm going to do a 12 and a half inch block. So um, I'm going to hold off on that one, I think, because I might as well do another two six and a half inch block because that'll give me another area on the quilt. This one is 25. And this one, um, pretty soon we'll have to do one at a time anyway. The, um, this is flowers. I don't really have flowers here. I have fish and stars and stuff. So we'll have to call it something else. But this is a fun block, and I'm going to do this one six and a half too. So these will be the two six and a half inch blocks that we'll do next week. And then I love this one. This is 22. And this is 20. But these are both... 12 inch blocks. So we'll give each one their due and we'll do them. The 12 inch blocks really take the whole time to sew them together. This one might take a bit of time too. So we'll see. I'll put the numbers in. You've seen them all. So now you'll know what the plan is going forward. If you have a preference for something, let me know. I have to get sleeves for those. Um, great morning. I hope you guys had a great 4th of July. We went out on our boat. We On Friday, we did a whole bunch of stuff around the house, and my husband found a whaler. We got the opportunity to get a ring on the dock at the yacht club. We have a dinghy, but we can't trail the dinghy behind our new boat because we have outboard engines. So we're going to... Anyway, long story short, he bought a whaler. He found a used whaler. In Danvers, we've been looking. We gave up the ring, actually, but we got it back because nobody else had taken the spot yet. And um, it's, not, it's not a desirable spot, so it doesn't surprise me. The desirable ones have little floaties on either side, but we're on the list for that. And someday we'll move our little whaler into one of those spots. And um, so we did that Friday. Then Saturday, we... Um, waited for the fog to lift and we went out to the boat and um, and we spent the night Saturday, Saturday night on the boat. It was so beautiful. And Sunday we woke up and it was overcast and we were all like, oh, should we go in? And we hung out on the boat for a while. We made breakfast 
Laura, we made breakfast with the mug, putting the egg in the mug, putting it in the microwave. We cooked bacon in the microwave, and we had a bacon, egg, we had and cheese sandwich for breakfast. We were so proud of ourselves, and I give you a hundred percent of the credit because we never would have done that otherwise. And um, and then we went and puttered around in Salem Harbor and stopped. We have a friend who has a dock, and he came down with his wife. And um, we sat and talked with them for a while, um, and us on our boat and them on their dock, and then puttered around. It was a great weekend. It was beautiful to spend it on the boat. I hope you guys had an awesome weekend, too. I hope you have an amazing week. Um, truly, truly, let me know if there's something you want to see. Um, and I figure we'll keep going on this for a while. Um, the quilt's getting big, and I'm loving every bit of it. And... Um, We'll decide when it's getting too big and if we want to stop and just sew together what we have and switch on to something else um, if that's a desire that you have. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Talk to you later.